Reserve time. Ten seconds. Remaining. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Star Series 13, the Star Ladder slash I League series event now, where we are in the stage number two. And we are getting into the last Radiance series of stage two right now. It's Secret going against CIS Rejects. And we are, well, coming off of a rough, rough game for Team Secret. And what was a very important match. Now, because they were unable to at least get a 2-0, they are secured into a fourth place position now in Group B, which means they are going to be going up against Five Team Na'Vi in the first round of the last chance single elimination bracket sounds very confusing at the end of the series today i can break it down a bit more into detail for you as far as where things are going to be going and if there is the chance for tiebreakers which there still is a chance even though secret have secured a fourth place spot the determination or at least the uh well, what's in store for possibly a team like liquid is possibly a tie for second place which is very very important so with that said i'm coddle guy from beyond the summit and going to be joining me once more is clairvoyance uh clairvoyance we're back now and we're going to have to see Secret kind of shaped things up a bit. It was a hard game number one, so psychologically, I hope that they're able to kind of shake that one off. Or do you think there's a chance that they just may not take this match too seriously? Because does it really concern them where Liquid end up <laughs> and CIS? Uh, honestly, I, I think it does. But more importantly, I, I just don't see Secret as that team that gets too old every day. And I know we saw it last night. Uh, last night was actually the first time I've seen Secret too old, this uh, rendition with this roster. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going to come back hard, man. I think the boys, I'm sure they had a few brief moments to think through and talk about it. And I'm sure they're freshened up and they want to win. And I want to see them try at the very least as well. Because last game, even from the early game, you know, we saw the Shadow Fiend getting so pressured at the middle line. And it just seemed so downhill from that point on. We'll see if uh, CIS Rejects try to do a bit of the same and hope that if they just get a simple punish onto Weeha in the mid lane, that it will lead ultimately to their success in the match. Now... For this game, Secret do have first pick, and after banning out Wisp and Shadow Fiend, which last game they did get a hold of themselves, they're going to opt for a first pick Winter Wyvern. The one-two punch from CIS Rejects is going to be Slardar and Bane. First thing that pops into my head that I would love to see from Secret is a page out of the E-Home book and grabbing that support Abaddon. I love him against the Slardar-Bane combo, but I don't know if it's something Puppy may consider or not. Support, pardon me? Uh, Abaddon, you know, get the shield, oh, take off the yes, sleep, yes, take yes. off the amp damage. Yeah, it, yeah. it worked Land out for E-Home very nicely, but I don't know if it's something right. Secret would do. It's uh, it's definitely an option they can go for. I feel like with the Wyvern, though, they they could go something else. Um, I know the Tusk is banned, of course. I think Dazzle is also a very possible option, of course. It doesn't remove the debuffs as much, but it gives you the ability to stay alive for five seconds, guaranteed. Unless you're facing an axe, of course. And uh, something they can go for as well here, but... Same problem as last game, I feel like, because right now, the first two picks from CIS Rejects last game, still around for game two here, and this is a high-pressure lane scenario yet again. So secret, they will have to be prepared this time, possibly send the Wyvern mid from minute one, and yeah. see how it goes from there. If not the Wyvern, whoever, yeah, the other plus one support's going to be, and look at there this early is. commitment from secret, they just want to make sure they get this Ember Spirit right here and now. Even with a chance that CIS Rejects could easily pick up a couple of counters along the way. I mean, imagine them sneaking in now, maybe something like a Night Stalker, or again go back to that Disruptor, and this Ember could still run into a little bit of trouble, but I don't remember very many games where Envy has lost on Ember Spirit in their defense. Mm -hmm. You know what? I'm looking at this uh, third band here. It's uh, it's also the same. Pretty much a replica of last game, last game yeah. in the Huskar. I guess I guess they wanted to pick up Ember or something, and if I recall correctly, I think CIS Rejects actually banned it after the Huskar ban. So maybe that was the strategy that, that they had in mind last game that I overlooked. Uh, mm. Regardless, they have it here, second pick. And of course, as you said, the Disruptor is very much a possible possibility again. And honestly, I feel like CIS Rejects could pick up like the exact same five heroes and still do well. Uh, I really feel like that, that, uh, that draft they had last game was very strong in all stages of the game. I agree with you. I, I agree with you, too. I mean, down to Iceberg, just doing work on that Wind Ranger. Afterlife, I feel like almost every game I've seen him, he's been on a Slardar. So this is definitely something he's it's happy to misery. have. Or, or Yeah, pretty much. The new Misery. I mean, Secret are just like, yeah, we're done with that hero. That's just yeah. not, that's not hip no we're more. We're here with I'm not the cool old with Misery. Time to, yeah. time to theorycraft back to the drawing board. 
I know, right? And it's like, where where do they go from here? They might have to go to like old staples. Like, I mean, they could go back for Darkseer once more. Darkseer ain't too bad. You got vacuum into your Winter's Curse. Ember benefits a lot from an Ion Shell. It may be just something that they decide to reach for once again. If not, creep in a Brood, but no, that's not going to be an option. Yeah, they took brood it away. has no more. <laughs> they snag up the Darkseer for themselves, which means that this Slardar is not going to be an offlaner. He's either going to be a position one or a position four or something. Mm -hmm. That's going to be interesting. And that, that pick right there pretty much denies two options from Secret. Yeah, that's right. So it's a really nice pickup on the Darks here. There. Again, another hero that forces Secret to pay attention not only to both mid, uh, not only to mid, but also to the safe lane as well. Like last game, they had the Ancient Apparition who was getting pressured pretty hard against the Slaughter. This game, they have the Bane Elemental again. But they have to watch out for the two lanes yet again. And uh, another scenario that Secret will have to find a way to overcome. Man, I tell you, the birthday boy, Go Black, he is a crafty drafter. Very, very crafty. Oh, yeah. He's he's one of those originators of the you know, support tree for a while, even before the mighty PPD was one to kind of be recognized for it. Oh. And uh, <laughs> that's right. You know, that's right. Yeah, you know, and it's he's done his circuit. He was even drafting for Navi for a little while, and then what? What? what he was on Virtus Pro Polar. This guy is a wealth of experience as a captain and calling shots, and he's always bringing in new talent and it looks like he's found a really nice groove with his team right now so and and now changing things up a bit going against a mastermind like puppy this is this is a sight to behold right now these are two very veteran european captains right now just going toe to toe and look at how much time puppy is spending here this is his reserve clock and they're going to get the boxing gloves for envy now and misery i mean how do we how did i not even think of that magnus going to be grabbed as the third option you know um we saw it, I, I think we saw it yesterday against Vega as well. This hero right now, it's uh, well, it's wonderful, wonderful, and like if you have the high skill cap to play, you can land some really crazy RPs and whatnot. Still a very difficult to execute hero. And of course oh, with yeah. Winter Wyvern, the synergy is a little bit easier because Winter Wyvern is essentially an RP that's ranged, single click, and you kind of can't miss it. Mm -hmm. But the uh, Magnus, it's not easy in this meta because everybody's watching out for it and they're so keenly aware of what the Magnus is doing in the team fights. Uh, again, it's, oh, it's an eternal MV Ember with uh, with the Empower, but uh, I still I still am somewhat doubtful of the potential. I'm not gonna lie. I, I'm you know what just like tickled my pickle right now is if CIS rejects, <laughs> grab up something like a Silencer, dude. What if they get like a Silencer? I mean, you get it's a that means it's gonna be a position one Slardar, but oh my god, everybody's just pulling out. Okay, so that's a Weeha Magnus and a Misery Nyx Assassin. So both teams are really flipping the script here on us a bit. Mm -hmm. So I I'm only theorycrafting in the sense that they could move Slardar to the one position and farm him. They have Invoker for the mid, uh, Darkseer in your offlane, of course, and then Bane and plus someone like a Silencer. Man, that would ruin Ember's day on a setup. The big team combo they have between Magnus and even Wyvern already. A possible option, if not going back to the disruptor one, or uh, yeah, the disruptor once more. I'm curious to see it, but man, even the other way. Now it's uh, the Wii Magnus, man, against yeah. an Invoker. What do you think? Uh, I think I don't think it's for sure yet. I do think it's most likely going to be because this Nyx Assassin pick was a. Uh, it was drafted after three Intel heroes on the side of the CIS rejects Invoker, Bane, as well as Darkseer. And Puppy is like a very. Uh, he has that old school way of drafting where he sees a counter potential and he goes for it. And wow, that is also another good hero here. Very hard to kill with all those big one time ultimates. And uh, just going back to the Nyx though, it, it's the mana burn that's really scary for the Darkseer and Invoker. So. Could be a support Nyx, could be the mid lane Magnus or the off lane Magnus. I don't, at the very least, I don't think we're going to see a pilot die Magnus and rule out that option for sure. But this last pick uh, will introduce that position lineup for us pretty clearly, I imagine. I mean, the, is it though? What is it? Is it, is it juggling Darkseer or is it a roaming Slardar, you think? I, I'm not too sure what's something I think it's a four position Slardar, three position okay. Darkseer, and okay, uh, okay. safe lane Nursa. Very man like, very very man mode here for CS rejects. But with the name like that and the and the way they like to play, I think it suits them wonderfully here. And look at the final grab from Secret. Going to be the Skywrath Mage. Adds more onto a bit of their wombo combo. And uh, well, I guess you have some kiting potential with the concussive shot. Silence is always great to have when you're going against someone like an Invoker, Bane, Darkseer. Uh, what are your impressions with the last grab, the mighty Skywrath Mage? One we don't get to see too often. It's a uh, it's it's one of the pilot die signature heroes actually. I think uh, I think of pilot die. I immediately think of undying Skywrath and bounty hunter. 
just one of those heroes that can go around the map, dish out, dish out a lot of early game havoc, and suicide to neutrals, and then come back with full HP, full mana, and kind of rinse, lather, repeat. And, uh, yeah, it, it fits the strategy for the time being, because right now, Secret's uh, big, biggest game plan, I think, is to get six on as many heroes as possible, and then just hold the line with the Ember. Because, to be honest, there's not a lot of tools on the side of CIS rejects that can break base or pick off the Ember without the coordination of like a multiple set of heroes. That's true. It almost feels like they're kind of going to be going for what we saw in game one. A hope for just a, a, such a big beat down that you don't even have to worry about trying to see just strong defensive fortitude in the base. So yeah. that's that's a that's a bit risky. You know, if things don't go according to plan, then you're going to find a, a secret team and we're going to get one of those games where they just kind of slowly starve you out. And the Envy Ember just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And eventually he's just one shotting your supports by blinking in slide of fist and remnant away. And next thing you know, it's just disaster. So it does feel I don't want to say all in from CIS rejects, but it definitely feels pretty heavy in the department of this has to go well at the start and mid game. Otherwise, we're we're, we're going to be a bit doomed here. And look at this five man aggressive movement here. What they don't know is there's a fuzzy wuzzy nearby. But he's just going to head back to the lane here and secret are not going to find their first blood opportunity. And we'll probably just opt to get some wards down, block some camps and get a hold of that rune on the bottom. Yeah, it's definitely going to go for the top bounty here, and Secret's probably going to secure the bottom with the with all the wonderful positioning they have now. As you mentioned as well, the, the pull camp is blocked with two wards, mind you, I think. So, that's going to be a lot of, I guess, uh, bonus aggression coming out of them. Since there's no pull, they can just walk around. They have the vision with the ward as well, and it allows them to be more maneuverable with, with the Skywrath possibly. Yeah, and that ward is not coming down. One of the things, I guess, if you're running a pretty aggressive, always want to fly core Slardar is you might lack a little bit in the ward and early support department here, and they don't have a sentry on hand, so this pull camp is going to be blocked for good, but maybe something that CIS rejects are anticipating, that he's just not going to have the assistance of that pull camp. We'll have to see, but Puppy back is like, I know you guys want uh -oh, to be aggressive puppy. in the mid lane, but he actually might have put himself in a bit of a jam. Now he's going to be able to step away here, gets the help from the slow, and they're thinking about turning back on the Goblack. He gets off the Brain Sap, will kind of heal up a bit, and this is just going to be a trade where Secret are going to get more of the damage done. I mean, look at this, even Pylai dies. Like, I can get maybe just one more Arcane Bolt. No, okay. We'll turn back it around. Yeah, I didn't actually realize that uh, Pylai was so close to this enemy to Puppy there. I, I thought Puppy might have actually gotten slept while he's in the air, and then just uh, ran down with the Iron Shell and the Bane's superior movement speed, but... To Pai saving the day... They're able to see another one, and just, uh, I guess, I think we wanted to ward up the the neutrals there. I guess he saw it wasn't being pulled. Do so, but a lot of pressure coming out from Secret already. Yeah, especially this bottom lane, man. But Tao, mid lane, I'm seeing the skewer back from Weeha here on the Goblack. Very nicely played, but it looks like he might be the one to go down. He will. First blood. Will go to birthday boy Goblack here. And, well, he will end up dropping in the end, but it's a huge benefit for CS Rejects. They get the XP bonus, they get the first blood bonus, and... All is well. Oh no, top lane. Misery walks himself right into a crush, and it's going to be a kill. The Darkseer, with the help of that Ion Shell, makes it that much easier, and well, it's another I, strong start here for CIS. Yeah, that, I can't believe that actually just happened. I turned my camera towards mid because uh, I didn't hit. I didn't actually see the skewer, but Misery was already safe. He was healing under the tower, and I guess he kind of walked back in with the creep wave and always want to fly. Probably just crushed him up for being cocky or something. I don't know. That was a. Really unanticipated death, and he's gonna be able to pull the creep wave now as a as a result. Denial from creeps, which is nice, but he is going up against 2v1, and this lane is not gonna be easy for him anymore. Oh no, not at this point, and they already know it. So CS rejects can pull out some additional assistance there and put some towards the bottom lane. You know, poor little Ursa here is not having the easiest time getting to the CS. We know for our Skywrath Major is one of the best at being annoying in a lane and zoning back people. But now they're going to make their move. They have a rotation in coming out from Slardar now. Always want to fly makes the rotation from top lane. They move in. They get the crush. It's set up after the Nightmare, and they're going to get it done. They might even get Envy oh, now. Oh, my goodness. And they do. Oh, and, oh Puppy. and Puppy comes in after. This is disaster for Secret. Double kill to Afterlife. They end up losing Always Want to Fly, but my goodness, it was worth. What, what? is happening? What? <laughs> my words exactly. What is happening right now, man? This, this is some crazy stuff. Not, not the type of aggression and turnarounds that I would expect to happen on Secret. 
This is this is some real crazy stuff. There's a lot of burst damage, early damage, and most importantly physical damage coming out from the side of CI's project. So I think I think Secret with their low armor heroes and magical heroes, they should realize they can't fight into this despite the positions. And I don't know, man. They just keep getting caught under their own terms. It's hard to gauge whether it's more CIS, Re uh, CIS Rejects offer such a aggressive front that it throws a team like Secret, who may be very disciplined, off their groove a bit. If it's that, or if it's Secret just maybe taking this game a bit lightly, and they've been playing with their feet. I, I don't really know, but it's just... For what we're seeing right now, this is not the same secret oh, that we I saw. Frank for and the yeah, it, it just does not continue well for him here. Bottom lane now, Pi gonna be going down easy. Puppy shows himself. This time they're not gonna be able to follow up with a couple of extra kills, but still kills in a wonderful direction here for CS Rejects. Always want to fly is gonna grab that one, and this is your quote four position roaming Slardar. He's already involved in five of the six kills. Oh, and you know what? Puppy, he's going to be careful now, too. He's only level one. He doesn't have Arctic no, Burn, but I think Oblast is going to kill Gates for the time being. He has yeah. nothing, man. He's been supporting in all like all throughout the game, and but there were some pings at bottom. I thought there was going to be another kill, but... Yeah, which... They're going. Please don't... Pai's like, please don't do this. <laughs> not again. He'll be able to put himself in a firmer position under the tower, but it's not that aggressive stance we were seeing from Pi previously. Before, he's like happy to dish out the arcane bolts onto Ursa and, and, and frustrate him a bit, but this time he'll have to think twice. Luckily for him, they do have some side vision still by that blocked pull camp, but you know certainly they haven't had to worry about pulling a camp whatsoever. They've been happy to just farm up kills in the lane itself. Yeah, yeah they've been playing so much more aggressive in, uh, in lieu of the pulls been working out for them perfectly and again puppy he's uh he's about to hit level two now finally i think but this slow progression is really really hurting him for sure and pi another death i believe oh goodness i don't another know another one I, for always want to fly everyone getting involved in it I, I don't know if he can help this at, at, at this point i think it's just so easy for this bane with his 365 movement speed and they have the ward but the tree angle is so convenient for him that he can just walk in with nightmare and it really is just that easy. I don't think they can do this at bottom lane anymore, but, but where can the Ember go otherwise is the real question, I guess. And if we check over the other lanes, Bomb has been pretty action-packed, but to just kind of get up to snuff here, we have 21 and 1 CS to Iceberg's 28 and 5. So the Invoker in a nice spot. He's about to hit his level 7. In comparison, we have just getting his level 6. So we do have RP... In the pocket, ready to go. Unfortunately, you know, we don't have Pi near his level 6 to offer anything like a Mystic Flare to help burst things down. And, uh, well, for up and above, Misery is at his level 6, so Vendetta is a possibility. And so there are setup options coming in in the form of those ultimates here. Oh, but Weeha. Are gonna find the, uh, Weeha! We're trying to walk towards the rune! He wants it, but he ain't gonna get it. What he's gonna get instead is, you know, he's gonna get his ass killed. Puppy, though, was able to creep in from behind, snag up the rune, flies up above and beyond, him. but... Look at the surge, look at the chase, they got the sprint and everything. Puppy's like desperate to make it out. Now he has some boots, but it's not going to be fast enough for for this. Iceberg even shows up and they're just escorting him at this point. Oh my gosh, did, did you see what they just did? I think Weeha actually pulled Puppy the bottle with the courier coming in. So Pup tried to bottle his way out. And now Weeha's not going to have his bottle when he spawns. But uh, never mind, Puppy spawns in like 10 seconds because he's level 2. <laughs> yep. So Weeha gets his bottle back. Nothing's lost. Uh... Yep, and it looks like they're going to take their business back to the bottom lane because Envy is probably calling out for a little bit of assistance here. He's still being able to hold some respectable CS, 29-9, and nine, but oh, here, we here go, again, though. the birthday boy steps in, has a nightmare waiting for him. There's a two-man crush. The swipes are out, and that is just a formula for, for absolute disaster. It's just a beautiful setup once more. They don't have the vision on the side to see the roaming little Bane, and Envy is just walking on eggshells, it feels like, when he goes to these lanes to farm. Yeah, vulnerable to crack at any moment, and Weeha is finally rotating in. Uh, I think the ward might have scouted it out, and Ramses, is he gonna die? He has the enrage, and there we oh. go. No damage taken whatsoever. That's nice. That's a level 3 shockwave. 225 damage could have brought him down pretty damn low, but obviously not worth the investment of like any sort of skewer RP, so... Two kills, though, for Secret, man. You're looking at already... Nearly 4k net worth advantage at 7 minutes in? That is rarely heard of. That's that's a landslide at the start. Mm -hmm. Heavily in favor of CIS Rejects. Honestly, quite reminiscent of last game. Yeah. It really is. But uh, let's see if 
at least Seeker can attempt to change gears here with Vendetta and RP at their ready. And, uh oh, maybe a courier here? No, uh, already slipping out the other side. Afterlife will not kind of hang around for Misery's Vendetta and head himself right back. But, uh, you know, on one aspect, you're looking at Secret, who seem like they're starting to get some tools ready to go. I mean, you could just say the same for CAS Rejects, man. This Invoker's getting ready to come together pretty nicely. Looks like uh, Ursa was able to just recently pick up something here. Well, I guess it's just his stage boots for now. But once he gets something like a Blink Dagger, Invoker begins to go on the move. Nothing's going to come easy here. And while well, they're making a move for Afterlife, it could be a quick hit and run, and it will be here between the three of them. Secret able to grab something for themselves. And at this point, when they're this far behind, every little kill just certainly helps and adds that extra bit of network bonus. Very nicely done by him. He's really demonstrating the patience as well as why Nyx is so good against the dogs here in general. Uh, he didn't even have to care about the shell uh, on the creep to hit that stun, so that was pretty nice. And of course, Embers were picking up that level 6 uh, just a few moments before that engagement. Helped quite a bit as well. I'm a little surprised to see that Always Wanna Fly is still not even level 6 himself. He's been involved in so many kills and so much action, but has yet to get the amp damage in. Well, he needs a bit of harassment here from Wii, who's still holding his RP. He's muscling forward like he's thinking about doing something, but up and above on the other side, we'll catch the back end of it, but Iceberg gets the grab onto the Skywrath Mage right in front of Misery. Now, barely seems to make it out with his life. Goes for the TP Misery. No stun to stop him, so he's going to be able to make it out. A very smart move. He anticipated that the Ember could be rotating in with uh, enough mana to shut him down as well on the escape, so... Recognize that, saw his life points and said, the next assassin no longer has enough to kill me while I'm healing with the urn and got himself out. 2-0, two, 2 and 50 CS, one of those invokers, one of those happy invokers I might have. <laughs> Mid lane, I mean, always want to fly, just keeps flirting with Wii. Obviously, they have the skewer to make it away, he starts flirting back with a fake RP, but... 10 minute runes coming up and everybody wants to get to it right now, who's first in the scene? It's Puppy and Wii. Oh, swing and a miss on the crush here. Do they pursue? It looks like they will. Skewer in, but uh-oh, Tornado flies and it's a miss! RP's gonna finish off, always want to fly and catch up Iceberg, but they might be able to turn it back. Cold Embrace will be coming out, but the man is gonna be gone from Wii and he will not be able to make it away. It's a one-for-one -one trade, and it's one that technically will favor CIS rejects a little bit. But because Secret are still behind by that much, they will get the net worth bonus their way. Mm. Of course, they definitely didn't want to lose Wii, but they needed something, and that trade as a whole, I think that's one of those where the follow-up matters more than anything else, and in terms of follow-up, Secret had Envy free farming on the safe lane. I think that's something they really, really should be content with. For the... and it looks like they will finally get Always Want to Fly his time to get to that level 6, and they'll be able to have the amp damage now. Top tower. Back at mid, Invoker one step towards that precious Orchid here, he already has one Oblivion Staff, and uh, as we know, Ember Spirit, not going to be a big fan of that one, so we'll have to be on his toes here. Misery, who had been scouting out for and Vendetta here, is not going to get the opportunity. Very reserved play here from Always Want to Fly. He's just, I was going to say that, but now he's sprinting on in. Misery's waiting for an opportunity that may open up onto him here. There it is, Vendetta Strike. They got the stun. Lots of damage, but you know, Envy's going to just do some farm on the side, and now they're going to be looking for a turnaround here, and Envy is not going to have much to offer. So Iceberg Theodore making his move, quick tornado. Oh, oh, oh he my got goodness, it. Envy's he was so close to him that it came out just in time. And now Envy's going to be going down. <laughs> well, Noblack steps in and is like, I'll take that one. And it turns into a free snag there for the for CISR. Oh, dear. Well, it should have been a quick in and out for Misery and Envy. It turns into an Envy death with, uh, with no kills whatsoever. Always want to fly, obviously, was level 6 as the engagement began. And... Misery is going for round two here. He might get always want to fly if he sticks around long oh, enough. Yeah, this, and... this is an easy. Bing, bong, gone. Would have been Nicely a fortune if he missed that stun. It's a hard one to land, but he got it. He got it. No problem. Always want to fly. Just kind of flirting around a bit too long. No punish him for it. But uh, what do we see here? Weeha. Is he trying to hold out for a blink dagger? Not going right for something like the arcane boots. Figures it's a bit too late for that and puts more favor in getting the setup, or...? I think he wants to blink immediately. I think most players right now, they prioritize the blink before the net boots. And sometimes they even get shreds as well, because they power buffs. But, uh, oh. but yeah, I think he really needs the blink dagger. He needs that uh, playmaking potential. It's a miss on the tornado here, but they're thinking about moving in. They drop a sentry. They'll see Weeha walking in. Can they turn onto him here? Oh, they tried. They got the cold snap. EMP's gonna be out, and it actually hits him. 
But man, he instantly bumps the mana right back up. Oh, Fiend's Grip, got to get quickly canceled from the silence. Nicely done, but Urn's going to be going out. Weehaw could be going down. He's trying to bottle charge his way through it. Still persistent. It's going to be Iceberg, and he will be ending with the kill. Envy looking to come in, dropping down a big Mystic Flare, but it's not going to be enough. Pi will lose his own life. Always want to fly. We'll shrug that one off, and it's two down from the side of Secret. About to be three if they're able to grab Puppy, oh and they will. Goodness. Double kill for Iceberg. Envy wants to engage, looking to move in, and now Ramsey shows his ugly mug and says, you're not going to be doing anything here. That's a four-man takedown on Secret. CIS Rejects now will just take this wonderful happening into the pit now and get a free Aegis out of it. You know, this is this is not a throw. This is not a 3-2-2 or anything like that. This is this is actually CIS Rejects just playing an outplaying secret in, in every way. And again, Kato, I'm I'm a little bit shocked, but I, I just don't know what to say aside from that. It's, it's a real surprise to me that from the laning phase too, how Secret tried to rebut the aggression coming out of CIS Rejects and and we are now getting picked off after a Roshan kill that he saw happen. Oh, there was a man. word to detect the the heroes walking out of the pit. I I don't know, man. I I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> it's just it is. It's very flabber. I'm flabbergasted right now. This this doesn't seem to be the secret that we've come to know. Or this is one of the best forms of CIS rejects we have seen to date. Either way, I mean. With a big win here and CIS get 2-0, they get their second place spot and there will be no tiebreakers. I, I understand that maybe Secret's heart could be out of it a little bit knowing that they're going to be guaranteed fourth place after already dropping game number one, but you know, not like this. You don't want to have a showing like this. Or... Let's we'll see what kind of fight they can put up. Lots of faith out there that Master Envy and his precious Ember Spirit could still pull this one back, but my oh my, he's got a long way to go. Gosh, and you see Afterlife, look at his awareness. This is... If he stays under the tower here still, this is... This guy's insane. This is... This is honestly a really, really good play. I know the heroes have been missing for some time, but Envy's getting caught at top in the meantime and does always want to fly, have a blink. No, he does not, but there's an Orchid from the Invoker. Orchid, Tornado, Envy's gonna be going down, and will they get a trade at least for it here? Afterlife pops out his mech. Rotations are starting to come. There's the vacuum, and... They're persistent. They just shove them right into the wall with the help of a curse. Now they're trying to make it out with their life. Can they make it away? Oh, ho, ho, puppy barely makes it away. The rest of the team also able to make it out and back to the fountain. It turns into an envy for an afterlife of trade that I'm sure CIS rejects are just still happy to have here. But we'll see them now transition it to a likely tier Radiant one takedown. The game is still theirs at this point. Yeah. Secret just need to try to hold out as long as possible. The, to their benefit, CS Rejects, though they have a lot of kills, this is going to be possibly their first tower of the game. So Yeah, what a surprise, really. The, they already got a 10k gold lead, and I think that they assembled this lead without actually getting towers. Ejected. Wow, this is some... This is some digging for kills, I must say. 19 to 6, the score, the bounty rune coming out for Iceberg, so he's gonna be happy to grab that up. Misery's walking around, he actually has a blink dagger after that kill, so that's a nice pickup for him as well, but... Fortunately for him, level 1 Vendetta still at level 11, so he either missed skilled or has not skilled yet. Nevertheless, Secret are rotating 5 heroes towards the top, and they don't see this invoker coming in with the ghost walk. I feel like I've been seeing a bit too much of that today. Being level 11 and not getting level 2 ultimate. I can't remember the other time, but yeah. Yeah, it was Soneko with the Laguna, Laguna Blade earlier. Yeah, you're like, wow, that's weird. And then I guess Dark Sears as well put more favor in just getting the, the one level for now, even now on um, Afterlife. I guess it does, does end up being a bit more expensive. You don't want to put too much oh, out. But... Puppy. Oh, look at this. Cheeky play coming up from Iceberg on the back lines, trying to get hold of the support. Puppy. Wyvern and Weeha is like, I'm not going to let you get away with this. Now, Commits the RP it? for the Aegis now. Help is on the way. Go Black is coming with his Bane here. Oh, he's going to sidestep that one. They're still on chase, and I think they just accept the fact that he is gone. I don't know if that was worth it. Aegis is going to be down. And, uh, oh, uh, Misery is close here to Afterlife, but... Yeah, I mean, it's for a Wyvern. The poorest, one of the poorest in the game. They're going for know. afterlife here, I think. Misery has Carapace available as well. You can just I pop think it right gonna... now. No, I guess not. They thought other of it. Envy doesn't have a remnant. That's why they didn't go for that. Uh, he'll wait out that timer, but they won't have long to wait. Look who's already on the move again. And Weeha. Hi. They move in. He has no mana. He's dead. Yeah, that's right. Ursa has a blink dagger now. Be on the watch.
and quickly you're going to see the body language of Secret like, oh god, get the hell out. Puppy runs right back to the tower. Misery's oh, going to TP away, and Puppy's like, oh no! Oh no, oh no! I have no TP, I have nowhere to run! Tell my dragon family I love them and I'm sorry! He's gone for good. <laughs> that is, Ramsey's now dominating. Morbid mask in hand, nearly 13, 1400 gold. Bottom lane, it looks like Iceberg is going to get something. He's like, hey guys, I'll join you in the kill party. Boop! Gets a grab on the pile, I die! 23 to 7. Stands. Yeah, he didn't even need an Orchid for that one. In fact, Invoker got silent and managed to finish up the target because he was able to get the load of his spells off. Now, Misery is coming in for the hunt, but just not enough damage to solo kill the Invoker, I might add. No. He's gonna be giving them vision in the meantime while Envy's trying to farm his own woods. Nope, not anymore. Iceberg is gonna go into his own ghost walk, and maybe they're gonna bait in mid lane. Oh, they're hoping to they're bait something, it. and they do. They have the vision, they drop a sentry, and they got him. Chains, curse, Iceberg will go down. That's a good heads up play coming out from Secret. And good intel given from Misery leads him to that kill. Vision is everything in this game, and an is Nyx Assassin walking around with a 50 second duration vendetta. Whether it turns into a kill or just simple intel giving the enemy team vision, it's always gonna be worthwhile. Very nicely done by Secret there. Coming out from them now too. So maybe this is the beginning of them staging their comeback, but... Yes. CIS rejects, they're well in position. Deep, oh, I must Goblin. say. Plants down a nice ward. He almost is able to pop the smoke here. Now they pop the one of Pile I Die, and they're like, wait, something's fishy. Something's fishy. Oh, go, oh, oh, Goblin, get out. You're not in a good spot. You gotta run. They're still kind of perplexed here. They're looking around like, how did our smoke pop? Now they're going to just stumble onto mid lane and Secret are not going to get anything from the smoke. Radiance bottom tower they're still stuck in the middle here. I mean, they don't realize if they're caught between... There's a couple of CIS reject members just to the north and, oh, they barely slip away. They get down a nice ward and the Radiance jig will be up. Tower. Nice for TP's bottom, so there's no no chance to fight them at the there either. Pardon me, at the... Yep, but they still have that extra ops ward in the mid lane. That's a very nice bit of intelligence for CIS rejects. Hold on, I gotta, gotta go offline. I forgot to. There we go. Alright. Well, back and underway now. Aegis had been easily expended here, so CIS Rejects can just comfortably sit on the advantage they got. Maybe wait out the next timer here and make their move. I mean, they've been a little lackluster in the objective department, but they have certainly oh, not been lackluster in finding kills as they go again now in the bottom lane. Set up, crush, follow up blink from Ursa. It's just the Bash Brothers pretty much going to work. Envy doesn't really stand a chance. Neither does anyone. And moments like that make you think twice on even trying to farm anywhere. It really does. And of course, Misery is back in Vendetta form, so he's going to be able to walk out. Again, no sentries coming out of CIS rejects yet. Goblack has two in his inventory. One's going to be expended to just check out the award spot, I assume. No, he's just going to hold on to it for the time being. There he goes, plants it down on the floor, and is waiting for the sneaky Nix assassin to show up. But in the meantime... Oh. Yep, jump from always want to fly, leads in, vacuum wall, puppy going to be first to go down here, a respectable curse, but it only delays what looks like the inevitable, we, three man skewer, he goes right through the mystic flare, and though it's an express trip into the base, they still get what they want, a double kill now for Ursa, all of CIS rejects still staying alive here, but oh, Envy, oh, no, rolls Envy. himself right into a crush and into death, oh, that one hurts to watch. Secret now lose three. Actually, they lost four. There was a buyback used even from Puppy. And I just don't know. It continues to go from bad to worse. This tier two is going to be going down. Roche is going to be up soon, possibly. Oh, it's a small timer here. Less than a minute. CS Rejects could just wade back for it to come up and maybe go for a finishing push soon. Yep, another tier three goes down. The first, actually, of this game, rather. So... Probably gonna wait for the Roshan as you mentioned, and pinging out the Ancient Stack now, but they don't have too many Ancient Stack farmers. They do have a Slaughter, but I think given how aggressively they've been playing, I think they just want to get more map control, more objectives. Not sit around for neutral kills or anything like that. Now we see Iceberg, he has an Oracle Club in his inventory. I would imagine maybe a BKB since there's so many spells like Nyx Assassin, Skyrath, that could be very annoying to him, but at this point he could just turn it into an Agnims as well. So well. I don't know. Yeah. And also, there is a couple of spells that would go through the BKB, but I, I'm a man of Flash. I love an Agnum Scepter, but maybe the more defensive BKB would be in the best interest here. Uh-oh. He's briefly spotted out Misery. He points his finger. He's like, he's oh, got to go. BKBs. And uh, they're going to get him, it looks like, here. Pull back. 
Cold Embrace stalls it out a bit, but sure enough, it's done for. Look it up and ahead here. Iceberg making moves in, and they might get Puppy. Puppy goes down. Iceberg still deep. Envy and we will be able to punish him. Yeah, and well, the that, trade's though, still the better. Died. They're hungry, man. They just, it's just like what we were saying at the start. They may not have the best sieging kind of a lineup, but if they take games like this, they might not even need the high ground. They're just beating them so bad that they'll force them into submission. Yeah, that's pretty much the strategy. And of course, Roshan is up. They have Ursa available going into the pit, and Ursa plus Slaughter. You ask for a better Roshan killing combination, I think not. Oh, this is easy mode for him right now, and it's definitely a level two amp damage. He was a little slow to level up at the start, but he is making up for it in spades. At this point, he's already got both of his mobility tools. Secret wager that they might be near this Roche pit. They're kind of in the neighborhood, and he's going to be able to farm up a double stack for himself. It is under a little bit of vision. They see this right now, that we is in that secret shop. So they know that something's fishy here. They already ping out that area right now, and they're coming together here. Do they have a smoke? Yeah, I think they, they want do. a smoke. Yeah. Oh, goodness. They might... I think they're going to go all the way up and through here on the right-hand side. Oh, they're they going to catch Puppy. Puppy. Yeah, back. they got him. He's down. He's down and out. Envy, just let him go. Oh, he wanted to come in and get a slight of fist off. Hopefully he doesn't pay for it. He's able to run it away to safety, it looks like, and make it out from trouble. But those, even those little plays, man, they're just too risky. Sometimes you just got to let him go. Yep, pretty much. And now the Roshan is going to go down for sure. Nice mana burn coming out of the little creep, allowing the Slaughter to amp up right away, of course. The cooldown is only 5 seconds, so... That efficiency. <laughs> yep, efficiency indeed. 5 seconds is like 2 strikes, hell maybe 4 or 5 of your Nursa, so I'm, I'm ba I back you up on that. Mm -hmm. And now, with an Aegis in hand, CIS rejects in a very, very nice spot to close this series out in what could be a huge upset recently. 2-0 against Secret. Let's see if they can do it, or if Secret are going to be able to hold on. Fisticuffs already had here. Iceberg spots out Envy, orchids him up, and might be able to grab him. We got him. Nothing he could do. Times it out perfectly, gets the most out of the orchid, then it's the tornado right there at the end. Yep, I mean, the game's not over yet for sure, but uh, the scoreboard is still worse than the first game. And always want to fly. He's going in. He doesn't care. Man, going so deep and following him up is the Ursa, which leads to two strikes and a takedown of Puppy. He might even get Wii here. Oh man, barely able to keep alive with the help of Misery and that stun, but he's gonna have the do side do around this throne to step away, but he can't make it out. Always wanna fly, gotta get the crush, follow up kill onto Misery, and wouldn't you know it, all five of Team Secret are now in the sidelines here. Buybacks are already forced out, it's only 25 minutes into this game, it's 36 to 9, and what kind of world are we living in here? CIS Rejects on the verge of 2 0 -ing Secret in dramatic fashion both games. You, know, you begged the question earlier in the first series, you, you, you must ask me again, Kotal. With, with this second game, it's a lot more convincing than before, and which is it? Is it CIS Rejects? Are they, are they really that good, or is Secret sort of falling apart for the time being? And this is the second series, back-to-back, -back, that they're going 0-2 against, and Puppy's gonna go down now, swift fashion, not even a rebuttal coming out of MV. He has bots, and he has the one piece of the Battle Fury going in. Just not enough to hold the line here. And Weeha looks like he wants to come in for an RP. Oh, he's not going to get the chance. They blink in. They got an Orchid. He's out one minute, and it's over. Just like that. Secret. Got to get 0-2. Props to CIS Rejects. They play one hell of a game of Dota. And they it's just well-deserved. Who would have thought? 39-9. to Man, oh, man. Who would have thought, man? Certainly not I. That's all I can tell you right now. All I can tell all right, nice stuff. So with that and with this 2-0 win from CIS, what's this means for Group B? Well, Vega now still hold that first place position. It will now be CIS in that second place. So congratulations to them, man. They have secured their spot to go to the LAN final in Belarus. Liquid will get the third place, and that means Secret are going to be at the bottom in fourth place. But it's not over yet for those bottom two teams. They will get the opportunity now to go through a four-team single elimination bracket all for one last spot, the fifth spot from Europe. So they're down, but they may not be out. But those secret may think that they'll have an easier time in that elimination. OG are already going to be in there waiting for them. So it's not going to be easy. One of those two top teams, Clairvoyance, are not going to be going to Star Ladder, whether it be OG or Secret. And that was the number one and number two.